guys, welcome to this week's Friday Waffle. Um, <laughs> I've been, I just, I've noticed one thing when I do the waffles. Um, the light in here is not the greatest. I mean, I've got the window there. It always looks quite kind of washed out. So I'm, uh, I've just changed over. I'm now sitting in a different corner of my, my games room. It's not the most interesting view, but anyway, yeah, welcome to this week's Friday Waffle. Um, <clears throat> I'm actually recording this early because I'm on holiday this week and the next week um, this is my official summer holidays, not that we're doing anything. Um, my wife was supposed to be off but unfortunately, well not unfortunately, but she's uh, actually starting a new job and her uh, existing employers asked her if she wouldn't mind cancelling her two weeks holiday um, so she can do a kind of handover. So she's done that. So she's at work, my daughter's downstairs and I'm up here doing this. So yeah, what have I been up to? I say this is well, it's now Friday. I've, I've been off this week. I'm off next week as well. This week, wise, um, <clears throat> I on Monday, on Monday I went through to through to Glasgow to listen to a talk by Graham Aubrey. Graham was a renowned uh, cyclist. He was out the same time as Chris Boardman. Uh, Graham beat the hour record going around a velodrome, I think he did something like 31 miles, he beat that, the world record, back in, I think it was 1993, something like that, and he also won two world championship medals, um, he's a Scottish guy, comes from Ayrshire, so he was doing a talk on Monday, that was really good, and last night, uh, which is more gaming related, I was at a, a talk by a chap co uh, by the name of Andrew Reinhard, now the name's probably not familiar, but when I tell you what he was involved in, you'll probably know all about it. As you may be aware, back in 1983, there was the video game crash happened. Now, it didn't happen in the UK. It was mainly America. Now, it was really, it just affected uh, consoles. So, you know, Atari 2600, and television, Vectrex, ColecoVision. Um, basically, in 1983, it just went pop. Um, and... There was really no consoles were sold for a few years until like the NES came along by Nintendo. And unfairly sort of blamed for causing the crash was a game called E.T. by Atari. Now, you probably know all about E.T. I mean, some people, well, not some people, quite a lot of people would include it as one of the worst games ever. Um, in fact, some people would say it was the worst game ever. If you have actually played it, you'll know that that's not the case. It's not a great game. I don't particularly like it. Um, it's ridiculously unfair. You keep falling in a hole all the time. It's quite a frustrating game. But I know a few people who really enjoy it. Um, anyway, yeah, this game, um, they, they apparently made so many millions of copies and when the industry game, the industry just fell on its, fa uh, fell on its face, Atari apparently went to a desert in New Mexico and buried 5 million ET cartridges. Now that was one of these things that people spoke about in the industry and then it became, the more people that talk about it, it becomes something that happened and then it becomes, did it happen, did it not happen? It's an urban myth. You know, nobody really knew for uh, for certain. But in two, 2014, Microsoft commissioned a, a film to go and investigate to see if they could actually find the cartridges. So they basically went along, they spoke to the guy that's in charge of the landfill site in this desert, and he actually knew where Atari had dumped, apparently dumped the cartridges. So they went along and he did a dig, and lo and behold, they discovered some cartridges. So this guy, Andrew Reinhard, he was one of the archeologists um, involved in the dig. There's a film called Atari Game Over, which you can find on YouTube to search for it. Um, really worthwhile watching it. They showed the film last night, and then Andrew was doing a sort of question and answer type thing. So I got a picture taken with him. So up there is me, a big cheesy grin, taken with Andrew. Um, really, really interesting uh, thing. I mean, it's 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 a part of gaming folklore now. It really is. Um, <laughs> they didn't find. 8 million they found just over 800 cartridges now they seem to think that they see there's a, a, a train of thought that there was a a local warehouse had 800,000 cartridges and they seem to think that's what was actually put in the landfill 
Um, but they were only given, when Andrew was approached about doing the dig, he told them, uh, yeah, we're going to need two weeks. And they came back and said, how about two days? So they only had two days to do the whole thing from start to finish. And, uh, you know, they, they couldn't get anywhere near as much done as they wanted to. But they managed to unearth 800 cartridges. All of these are the property of the town. I can't remember the name of the town. It begins with A. Um, they belong, because they're basically refuge, that belongs to the town. So the town took them out, excuse me, and they sold them on eBay. And I think they made something like $100,000, which went towards, I think they paid for a, a new library, something like that. So, yeah, it's a nice story, and it was really, really good to actually be, to sort of be there. Um, <clears throat> anything else gaming-wise? I've been playing... A fair bit of my switch in fact i'm not going to talk about that because um yeah in fact i completely forgot to say i was at the uh if you watched my waffle last week i picked three of my three videos that i'm basically most proud of that i like <laughs> and one of them is uh, being a teenager growing up in a nuclear sort of uh, in the 1980s when nuclear war was a very very real prospect and I went, part of that video, I went to a secret bunker. It's not secret anymore, obviously. Um, in a place called Fife in Scotland. So I'd, I'd been there two years ago with my wife. But because I'm on holiday, my daughter was away out. She was in Glasgow yesterday. My wife was working. I thought, I'm going to go back through there myself and just spend the day. So I went through and I made a short film um, again, which I've stuck on my sort of main Facebook page. I'm not going to bother. Well, in fact, I'll stick a link to the uh, to the video up above if you want to watch it again. Um, yeah, so I did that yesterday. Uh, yeah, coming back, um, driving back, it's quite a long, it's about an hour and a half. I thought to myself, why don't I make use of the time? So I, I put the camera in the dashboard facing towards me and it's basically a little uh, bonus video which you can watch at the end of this, uh, this waffle. So, aye, so that has been it. Um, not a great deal. Um, channel, I seem to have picked up quite a few subscribers. Um, I also seem to have picked up a troll. <laughs> uh, it's quite funny. I, I put a, I put a video up of a, a Commodore 64 demo. Now, I've been making, I've, that's my third one that I've done. The, the three, or the two previously, I used, in fact, sorry, the first one I did, I should say, I just recorded it using an emulator because you get much, much better quality. Obviously, the sounds a lot better as well. But a few people came back to me and says, you're really not doing the demos justice playing it through an emulator. You really want to uh, you want to actually record, record it on a proper C64. So that's what I've been doing. Um, the last couple that I've done is basically pointing the camera at the TV and recording this demo. So I did one, uh, it was this week actually, and granted, I mean, the sound that I've got just comes with my TV, like most people, you know. Um, and the sound's not the greatest, it has to be said. It's got a bit kind of the tinny side. But I had one guy um, basically slagging me off, saying that I was being, what was it he said? Oh, it wasn't I was being offensive. It was basically slagging me off, saying that it's a disgrace that I should put up a video um of such low quality with such low quality sound and it's a like a slap in the face to to the producers or whatever it was and i just thought what an absolute arsehole you know so i, I replied and maybe I'm, I'm wrong i replied and i said as well you know if every gameplay that's ever been recorded on youtube isn't 100 percent hd quality with perfect sound then is that a, a slap in the face what was it he said i can't remember the exact words that he used the guy's a knob anyway, a complete knob. So if you're watching this, mate, um, I'm just going to delete your comments. I mean, I've done that. I mean, it, just some of the things that he was coming out with. You know, it's my channel. I'm not putting up with that kind of shite. I mean, <laughs> I don't proclaim to uh, have the best uh, production values as anybody that watches the channel knows that. Um, I don't take myself too seriously and I certainly don't expect people to, to start being abusive or... Uh, when they're watching the video. So anyway, I've deleted the, the comments because the guy has just been a complete knob. So, hi, um, that was it. Yeah, I've got, I've got questions from, uh, from last week because obviously um, I did my 1004 video special. Um, so these are questions from last week. So I've not even looked at them. So I'm just going to bash straight in. 
So kicking things off, Craig Wilson. Um, <clears throat> yeah, but Craig was commenting on one of the demos. Pretty impressive stuff. I like demos and games that push older hardware. What games do you reckon were hardware pushers on computers and consoles? Hey, right, let me think. On the Commodore 64, um, well, I've already looked at various demos. Hardware-wise, when you see 64, although it's not a, a game I'm a massive fan of, as far as pushing the hardware, Uridium, I think, is a very, very impressive game. I mean, the scrolling, I think it's... And again, please don't flame me if I've got this wrong. I think it might be 60 frames a second. But the bit for me that's the most impressive is the little spaceship that comes on at the start and it deposits your, your ship and then it just goes and it flies off the screen as quick as anything. I think that's mega impressive. So yeah, I think uh, as far as graphics go on the C64, I think Uridium is up there. There's other games as well, but that's the one. Commodore Amiga, um, I don't know, I mean, like Shadow of the Beast, obviously, is it the second one I think it was, graphically, it was pretty stunning, I mean, there's a lot of incredible games that came out in the, the Commodore Amiga. Um, Console-wise, uh, I mean, rather right, Spectrum, Zerix Spectrum, I'm going to go for Chase HQ, that is a really, really nice game. Um, you know, how they managed to get it looking as good, playing as well. It's even got undulations of the roads and the scrolling. And that, good to see the Amstrad one, is really impressive as well. So from an 8-bit perspective, I would say these two games are super impressive. Console-wise, um, oh, you know what, there's just, there's just so many games. It's hard to even think about. In fact, that's the thing you don't really think about nowadays. You never think about that's really pushing the console. I think because we saw the early games on the 8-bit, you know, most of which were absolute bollocks. When you see what they've done now, or what they did later on, you can it's, it gives you a kind of yardstick to compare it. You can look at the early games and look at the later games and go, wow, that was really pushing the boundaries. Um, whereas with consoles, you tend not to think, yeah, you get good games, you get bad games, but you tend not to think of them as that's you know incredible graphics because most of the graphics in modern games now is uh, pretty impressive. So anyway, listen, Craig, I hope uh, it's not the best answer, but thanks for your question. As always, right, Retrohawk. Hey, Alan, for this week's show, um, <laughs> I love how you call it a show, um, what do you think of this gaming era's pre-order culture? If you don't pre-order, basically you won't get it. What brings me to ask this is that this week I was really pissed to find I couldn't bag myself a copy of Crash Bandicoot on the PS4 it's out of stock everywhere for a very popular game. I find this pathetic that there are not enough copies to go about. Prices again are almost twice what the RRP was. Same thing with the NES Classic and now the SNES Mini. What is going on here? Sure, years ago stuff went out of stock but was always back in in a day or two. I just find it all a bit disheartening and stressful having to keep an eye out and be on top of pre-orders to get a simple game or a console. Um, sorry for the rant, but I feel I had to get off my chest. Cheers, Scott. You're absolutely right, Scott. I mean, uh, <laughs> I don't know what it is about this pre-order culture, creating demand, not enough stock. I mean, you're you're bang on about the the NES classic. Um, it's the same with Nintendo. Seem to be the worst. I don't know why they do it. Well, they, they probably do it for publicity, but it was the same with. Uh, what do you call it, the Wii, I remember when the Wii came out, I tried to, I wanted to get one, and it was a nightmare, and before long, they were on eBay for twice the price, and it's, that has continued, it's the same with the, the what do you call it, the Switch, you know, I don't know why they insist in making small numbers, it's not like they're a small company and they can't afford to, you know, put bigger numbers out there, but yeah, that carry on with the, the NES, Classic and the same with the SNES Classic, which I happen to get. I've managed to get myself a SNES Classic. I don't know what's going on there. I don't know why they do it. They obviously do it just to generate interest in the company. Um, but yeah, you're talking about games as well. <laughs> I, I I just don't get it. I don't understand it at all. You know, it was something unheard of back. You know, I was going to say back in the day, even maybe ten years ago, 
a game came out, you could buy it anywhere, but I don't know why they insist in making games in such a short kind of supply run. Um, it doesn't, it's not like they're making any more money, they're making less money because they're not selling. People want, people are wanting to buy and they can't because there's not enough stock out there. So I don't understand it. Um, it doesn't make any sense to me at all, Scott. I really don't know why why they insist on doing that. But yeah, I hope you've got it now. I've never actually tried. I've never actually even looked at the new Crash Bandicoot. Let me know if it's good. Um, so anyway, listen, Scott, thanks for the question, mate. Appreciate it. Right, here's a... This is, these are always slightly left-field John Yin. Um, before I forget for next week, number one, ethical systems in games thoughts. I'm thinking of titles like Fable, Dishonored, do sex and the like. I quite enjoy how the overarching theme transforms through specific arch. Uh, sorry. I quite enjoy how the overarching theme transforms through specific action to your taste, or if so, do you gravitate towards the dark side? Sorry, dark side or the light side? Um. <laughs> Aye, aye, it's, that seems to be quite a, a kind of common thing now, John, in games where you've got to kind of take sides. Um, I generally try and avoid games like that. Um, I mean, saying that, Dishonored, I really enjoy Dishonored. It does, it, um, it's a wonderful game. I've actually completed it twice, I enjoyed it so much. Aye, it's, it's, uh, oh. I mean, you're, you're talking here, sorry, similar thought. As far as your ethical principles are concerned, are there any game types you would refuse to play in moral grounds? Obviously something like paedophilia um, would be a step too far. Or is there any other themes you'd avoid or should we all embrace, sorry, or should we embrace all through gaming? Aye, I mean, I play video games because they're fun. I like to relax and play a game. It takes my mind off real life. Um. <clears throat> Some games, I think, I mean, get, Nintendo make fun games, um, you know, they're entertaining, you're able just to kick back and enjoy it. There are certain games, I mean, I generally avoid Call of Duties, all these kind of games. I mean, I used to like it in the World War Two sort of themes, but I've not played any Call of Duties for a long, long time. The last one I played for any length of time and just kind of stopped playing it was, I don't know what one it was, where there's the infamous uh, airport level where you're basically playing an undercover sort of terrorist, you're undercover, and you've got to go into this airport and they give you a command to basically go and shoot everybody, members of the public, and I think there's like women and children, and um, it does give you a, an option to, uh, to skip that level, which I did, but I don't know. I don't know. I mean, we all watch films. We all watch films that are, you know, ridiculously um, violent. I mean, I'm currently working my way through Breaking Bad for the second time. I've watched the whole lot, and I'm actually working my way through the through it for a second time because it's such a, an amazing program or amazing uh, TV series, I should say. And the violence and the blood is just completely out there, but. I don't know, it's, so, you know, the point I'm trying to make is we all watch films, films, TV, you know, it's, there's violence in it by the bucket load now, and it's it's part of kind of modern culture, and I guess that is now transformed into, or transgendered, well, not, 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 that's not the right word, it's, it's now in video games, <laughs> transgendered, that's not even a, that's not even a word, um, it's now in video games, um, but it's not something that I'm particularly into at all. Um, I don't mind games where it's like the light side or the dark side, where it's sort of fictional. But when it starts involving kind of like, it could almost be real life. Nah, I'm not overly keen on it. But I do understand that lots and lots of people are into it in a big way. So yeah, listen John, it's a, it's a pretty naff answer to be honest with you. But uh, I hope... <laughs> I hope I've kind of answered it slightly, but as usual, John, thanks for the, thanks for taking the time to ask the questions, mate. 
Right, next is Ian Hunter. Hi Alan, thanks for another informative waffle. I've just finished watching a YouTube video comparing the Sega Saturn with the PlayStation 1. I'm just looking at them there, there's my PlayStation up there and there's my Sega Saturn there. This led me to wondering which 32-bit console you own and which is your favourite. My personal favourite is the Saturn, as my Amiga said, CD32 went fizz a few years ago now. Um, 32-bit, right, I've got, a, I've got a CD32, I've got Saturn, I've got the Dreamcast, um, I've got the 3DO, PlayStation, PlayStation 2. My favourite one, um, I think, I think it would have to be the Sega Dreamcast because there are so many awesome shoot 'em ups on it, um, arcade games. Saying that, the Sega Saturn's a close second. I mean, you know, I really enjoyed the PlayStation, you know, I played it a lot like most people back in the day. Saying that, it doesn't get a lot of love much. I don't know why, there's just no games that I can think of that I think I want to play that. You know, if I'm going to play an arcade, shoot them up, whatever, it'll always be the Dreamcast or the Saturn. So I, I reckon probably, I'm going to go for the Sega Dreamcast. I reckon that's my favourite, most used 32-bit console. Um, but I says that the Sega Saturn is definitely a close second. PlayStation 2, again, it's a wonderful machine, but I, it wasn't, although I did own one back in the day, I got it later on, so I don't have a massive amount of affinity to it. And I think for me, with the PlayStation, and I've, I've spoke about this before, the PlayStation, PlayStation Syndrome, i.e. when you own too many games, like most people, I had hundreds and hundreds of games for it. You know, most of them were copied games. And because of that, I ended up not playing very much. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to go for the Sega Dreamcast scene. But anyway, thanks for the question, buddy. Right, Refraction PCX2. Great waffle, mate. Yep, you're not the oldest on YouTube. I think Baza H, <laughs> who does Spectrum games, is the oldest person I know on YouTube. Though, to be fair, there might not be a lot in it. <laughs> Thanks for that. Certainly with this, I don't know what you think of my beard. My wife likes the beard. I quite like it as well. It does make me look a hell of a lot older. But anyway, I have a question for your next waffle. With people doing great retro remakes of old games, for example, the School Days remake called Class of 99, what games would you like to see remade in a modern game? Conversely, what modern games would you like to see demade in a retro game? Um, I'm going to cover your second point first. Modern games made in a retro game. I'm not a big fan of that. I don't really see the point. There seems to be a popular trend at the moment with like indie games they bring out these games and they make them look like old games i understand where the appeal for some people you know some people like things like that probably people who have never actually you know they were they're basically too young they never got to play the original 8-bit games but people like myself who've been playing i was around from the very you know the birth of the the computer industry I played all the 8-bit games, I played the 16-bit games, I don't want modern games to look like old games now. Don't get me wrong, there's one or two, is it Shovel Knight? I think it is, it's quite good, but I'm not a big fan of taking, making modern, old-style games. I'm not a fan of that at all, but to answer your question, um, I made a, yeah, in fact, I've put it out, um, a game, I made a Why I Love video earlier this week on the C64, and it's Rocket Ball. Um, I'll put a wee link up up the top corner there. Rocket ball. It's basically it's a, a a sport, a futuristic sport where you you compete with another team and you basically go to try and score a goal. Um, fantastic game, a really sort of overlooked game. Not many people were aware of it. Um, I would love to see that getting remade. I can just imagine. I mean, the gra it would. It's a game that I think would benefit from the fluidity, the extra speed. You know, they're really super smooth scrolling. As long as it didn't deviate from the gameplay mechanics, they kept it exactly, you know, kept it faithful to the original. So, yeah, Rocket Ball, I think, would be an amazing game. Um, I'd like to see that get remade. Any other games? You know what? I just, I'm just, I'm looking at the thing on my wall, my pixel art. 
I would like to see somebody make a brand new version but sticking faithfully to the graphics, the sound, the gameplay mechanics of Way of the Exploding Fist. I would like to see that. If anybody is watching this that is talented enough, go and give it a go. That would be excellent. Way of the Exploding Fist. That would be really, really nice. Yeah. So, aye, anyway, like, I think, I think that's, that's it. Um, generally, I mean, like, Pipeline, Super Pipeline, love that game. Would it benefit from having, having a remake? I'm not quite sure. I think the pixelated graphics is possibly part of the appeal in it as well, so nah, I'll leave that one. But yeah, we have the exploding fist on Rocket Ball. I would love to see modern remakes of these, as long as they stuck to the actual gameplay. So anyway, listen, thanks for your, your question, mate. Right, and on to page two. Lurch666444. Are you excited about Atari entering the video game hardware scene again? Do you think they will succeed against the big three? Will you be buying the Atari box console at launch? Now, I've got to say, I've really not paid any attention to it. I mean, I've seen the headlines, I've seen people talking about it. I've watched a few um, videos about it. Hey, now, the thing is, to me, I mean, it's, it's quite appropriate because I was obviously watching that game over by Atari yesterday. Atari was basically the godfather the creator of video games as far as I'm concerned this big industry and it was all about the people it was the guys that they had back in the day now as we all know Atari is just it's just a a label you know the original Atari guys there's nobody left from Atari so it's just a label it's the same with Commodore or whatever you know so Atari are now bringing out a console what I think it's going to be is it's going to be an Android type device which is no different from any anything else that I own other than it's going to have an Atari logo stuck on it and the games are not going to be Atari games the games are just going to be games that could have been written by anyone else on any phone you know smartphone whatever um, so it's I personally I think it's going to have as much to do with Atari is I don't know. It's got in fact it's got nothing to do with Atari other than the name. So I don't know. I'll see. I'm certainly not going to go pre-order one. I'll see if it does eventually come to fruition. I'll see what it's like. But like I say, it's Atari. It's just a, it's just a label. The guys that wrote the the software that wrote the games, they're all away. It's just a you know. <laughs> it's got nothing to do with Atari at all. So watch this space. We'll see what it turns out like. Um, so anyway, thanks for your, your question, mate. Down the rabbit hole, Kev. For the Friday Waffle, hi Alan. So today, the phone app allowing voice chat on Nintendo Switch to function was released. What's that? The phone app? Ah, right, okay. Ah, I didn't realise that. So basically, you can be playing... Right, you can be playing the Nintendo Switch and you can talk through the phone. Right, I didn't... Thanks for that, Kev. I didn't even realise that. I'm sure my daughter will find it interesting because she plays uh, Splatoon a lot with her pal, so that's pretty cool. Do you find it silly how fans are defending this nutty way to enable chat on the Switch given the PlayStation and the Xbox have been doing it natively for years? Um, I, I don't know, Kev, you know, I mean, I... I <laughs> know, like, I don't think any Nintendo console had the functionality to have like online chat so if having a phone app enables it then good for them um yeah it's not i mean we've been we've been doing that since even since the original xbox probably did the, the xbox have that i think it may have i know certainly the 360 having the online chat was a big big thing especially when you're playing with mates as well it's always good fun um yeah i'll let you go and check it out okay i am not even you this is the first i've heard of it I'll need to go and try it and I'll report back. Um, <clears throat> but you know what? If it works well, then great. Good stuff. Right. Also, some have said the operating system for the Switch is very basic, like a Nintendo-themed Android menu. Would you agree? Yeah. it's The front end is not the greatest. It is very, very, very shallow. There's not an awful lot you can do. Compared to like the 
the Xbox One or the 360 or any of the kind of modern consoles. There's not a lot there. But I think the thing is, to me, I think Nintendo, it's all about the games. They're not wanting to turn it into some big social media thing like the other ones. I mean, you're not going to, well, you may well do eventually. I don't think you can watch um, Netflix, any of these things. Can you watch YouTube on it? I don't think. I think Nintendo, to me, are all about the games. So I think that's why they're keeping it, excuse me, keeping it really basic. Um, yeah. But there's not a lot to it, but you know what, if it plays the games, then that's that's fine for me. Secondly, I don't know how much of a completist you are when it comes to handhelds. Are you going to buy the new Nintendo 2DS? 2DS... Wait a minute, sorry, let me get this right. Right, there's, ah, there's the, the 3DS, then they brought a 2D one. So there's going to be a new 2DS. Which isn't 3D, obviously, because it's two-dimensional. Um, I've seen the, the 2DS, so I've seen the original one. I've not bought it. I've not got much of an interest in buying it. If I could get one for cheap, then I may well buy it, but the chances of me using it are pretty next to, to zero. So what is the uh, what's the advantages of the 2DS? Is it going to have a better screen, something like that, Kev? Um, nah, I'm not really... You know, I'll pick, up, I'll pick up one in for 20 quid on eBay, maybe... In, a few years time but I don't have a 2DS and uh, nah, I won't be buying the, the new one unless it's got some remarkable features or something but we shall see and thirdly I'm looking at a Wonder Swan that is presently sitting on eBay for a decent price but I'm not sure if I should go for it what is your recommendation um, I don't own a Wonder Swan cave and I've never actually owned one the closest I've had to using one is through emulation I think, was there a colour one? And a non-colour one? Um, I don't know. I mean, I think it looks kind of on a par with the Game Boy Advance. I might be talking nonsense um, as far as kind of technical ability goes. Um, again, it comes down to the number of games. I don't know how much you're talking about, Kev. Okay? Obviously, by the time I make this waffle, you've either bought it or you've not bought it. Um, I don't have any real experience with the Wonderswan Kev. Um, I don't think there's a massive, massive game library, so I wouldn't go spending too much on it. But I, I don't own one, Kev, so I'm probably not the right person to ask. The best thing to do is, if you've not bought it yet, go, go have a look on YouTube at, you know, games for it, see what it looks like. And finally, someone was discussing the new Blade Runner film and brought up that historically the only two official Blade Runner games were ever made. I've got the PC Adventure game and we'll do a video about it someday. But apparently there was an action platformer in 1985 that came out for the ZX Spectrum and Amstrad CPC. Have you ever heard in time, Kev? I have never seen Blade Runner. <laughs> I've never seen it. It's a science fiction. I know it's got Harrison Ford in it. I've watched it. I watched it for maybe, I don't know, a couple of minutes, 10 years ago. And I just thought, nah. Can't even bother. So I've never ever seen the film, Kev, and because of that, I've not got an interest in seeing the film. Um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't play a game um, based on it. Um, yeah, sorry, Kev. <laughs> I can't even go check out somebody else. But um, I've never even heard Blade Runner on the spectrum. I'll may, I'll may have a wee look at it actually for a, a future Friday waffle, but not Friday waffle. Uh, me and Mister Ten Minute Mashup. But yeah, never seen the film, Kev. I've really not got any interest in playing the game so as usual Kev thanks for the questions mate excuse me a wee second I'll just get a drink of my uh... right Scott Scott Henderson thanks Scott your thoughts on Blackpool both the town and the event seem very similar to mine I travelled down from Dundee to this event. I went to the Glasgow and Manchester last year, but this was the first trip to Blackpool. The trade area to me seemed more expensive than events last year, but that might just be a general increase across the market. With the cost of the Premier Inn and Petal being more than £160, I might be tempted to spend that money on some more games rather than head down... I'll just cut that one out. Okay, next up is Batman. Fine waffling as ever. <laughs> 
How about highly regarded retro games that you think are overrated or just plain awful? Mine is Ghostbusters for the record. And what game is generally regarded as bollocks do you actually enjoy Guilty Pleasures? Um, we both agree that Atari Pac-Man is nowhere near as bad as people make out. Um, highly regarded games that I don't enjoy. Oh, I've just, I was mentioning like Call of Duty and that kind of stuff. But that's not because it's a crap game. I, I'm just really not into these type of games. Um, I don't know. I, I can't think of... I can't think of any game that uh, I would say is bollocks. There's plenty of games that are mega popular that I have got no interest in playing. Stuff like Halo. I've tried and tried and tried to get into Halo and it just annoys me. The baddies, they're like, they make me stupid squeaky noises. I just, I don't enjoy Halo. So I've never played, I've played maybe halfway through Halo, the first one. Um, and it just annoys me so when I, any time a Halo game comes out, I wouldn't even look at it. I'm not interested in it at all. The Zelda games, I mean, saying that, I've been playing the Zelda game in the, the Switch. Apart from the, the one that came out in the Super Nintendo, I've tried to play them, and I just kind of get, I don't know, get bored of them. But it's like a lot of these open sandbox games. Um, you know, your, your, what do you call it, your Fallout 4s. Stuff like that, <clears throat> I don't know, I just find, I just find it tedious wandering about, even stuff like Skyrim, I mean I bought Skyrim for the PS4 and I played it for quite a while, and then I just got kind of fed up with the constant wandering about, um, I've just not got the patience for these kind of games, you know, and one, one of the game mechanics in these games which I can't be arsed with is we've got to craft stuff. You know, you've got to like mix herbs to make stuff and you know make weapons you can bolt different bits onto things and i can't even be bored with that i just want to go in and you know get money go into a shop and buy a new weapon or find a weapon i'm not interested in making them um so that's one game mechanic that always annoys it doesn't annoy me i've not got any time for it it just kind of puts me off playing a game because i always think that i'm missing out on so much of the game because i'm not able to do that um, maybe I'm just a bit thick, I don't know, but any other games that I don't like? Again, like fighting games, um, football games, I mean FIFA, I've, <laughs> I mean I, I don't know what the last FIFA game that I bought was, maybe a few years ago, got it for a few quid. I just find, I think they've overcomplicated the controls in football games. The last good football game that I played, that I enjoyed, I think was probably Pro Evolution Soccer on the PlayStation 2. I think it was, was it Pro Evolution 2? It might have been called, I can't remember, but since then, I just think they've overcomplicated it. They've got all the moves, I'm not interested in, you know, the, all the fancy names and that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, I can't I can't think of any one game that is like, everybody raves about, that I don't like. Well, there's plenty of games that I don't like, but I can't think of, I don't not like it because it's crap. Um, I mean... Generally, you'd find that if a game is well received, then it's probably because it's it's quite a quality game. But it may not be something that I'm going to enjoy. I mean, what was the big game? What was that game? I can't even remember the name of it. The one that got panned. It was a uh, oh another man's sky, no man's sky, something like that. Whatever it was, I remember watching. Um, I was watching a YouTube video of it getting played, and after ten minutes. I'm thinking to myself, where's the gameplay? Am I missing something here? And as we all know, the game, it got panned. I mean, it was massive. The hype was incredible by Sony. And then when the game actually came out, it wasn't quite what th people thought it was going to be. I believe it's now been uh, updated quite a bit and it is actually not a bad game. But again, it's all about crafting and making stuff, medicine and what have you, so I've got no interest in that, but, um, yeah, anyway, thanks, Bart, appreciate the question, mate, and listen, the last one, um, like I said, there's a bonus video coming up, so I won't, I don't want to drag on too much, Mr. Doug Scullery, you find yourself shipwrecked on a desert island, but you manage to salvage food, 
water and solar powered electric supply before the ship sinks. <laughs> Months pass, bored, lonely, frustrated. You can see where this is going. Until one day you see a rowing boat approaching. Squint in your eyes, you can't quite make out the person in the boat. It's either. <laughs> That's a brilliant one. Rackler Welsh carrying a ZX81 and a big bag of games. Or Hilda Baker. Who's Hilda Baker? I'm guessing she's some old woman. Carrying an Amiga 1200 and a big bag of games. Which do you prefer? Oh, Rackler Welsh by ZX81. Oh, it's got to be Rackler Welsh and the ZX81. Enough said, Doug. <laughs> anyway, listen, guys, thank you very much to all your questions. Thanks to your continual support. Uh, subscriber, subscriber? subscriber numbers is going up. Um, I always appreciate all the feedback you give me. Listen, before I go, I've got a quick pick up. Um, I was contacted by a chap who goes by the name of James Grayson. Um, and he asked me if I would. He, he was telling me that he's got a company or he makes mouse mats, mugs, etc. And he asked if he could send me a mouse mat. So I gave him a, an image to put in a mouse mat, and this is it here. You've probably seen it, it's uh, Alan Sugar, it's actually me. <laughs> now I've got to say, the quality of this mouse mat is really, really nice. It's, it's cloth, obviously. Um, the picture isn't the best way to show off these mouse mats. Um, I mean, James has got a website, which I'm going to put a link to below. You can go and check it out. He makes some cracking mouse mats. I think these sell for about, is it seven, eight pounds, something like that. I think that includes postage. I can't remember, but go and double check. But thanks, James, for the mouse mat. Really, really excellent. Nice quality. He also gave me some badges, which unfortunately are a wee bit too small, so I couldn't show them. But yeah, if you want mouse mats, go and check out James's website below. Um, James has also um, come back to me um, with uh, some prices for mugs. So the mugs that I was getting, um, I was getting them from a company called Vista Print, which you've probably heard of. James has done me a deal that I can get them a wee bit cheaper. So going forwards, if you're wanting a Mainmeister mug mat, um, mug mat, if you want, or you can get a mouse mat if you want, a Mainmeister mug, um, as you know, all the profits are going to McMillan Cancer. I don't make a single penny. I'm charging you the cost price plus a donation to charity. The mugs are going to be £10. If I get enough people wanting um, some more, I'm going to place an order with James and get some mugs sent out. So let me know, guys. If you're wanting a Mainmeister mug, stick your comments below. Um, let me know. Um, and please go and check out James's website. So again, thanks for that, James. That is top notch. So anyway, go and check out the wee bonus video. Right, okay, guys. This is just a little bonus section. <laughs> I'm recording this on Thursday. Um, <clears throat> I've just been to the, the secret bunker in, uh, in Fife in Scotland. It's near Queen here St Andrews. It's the second time I've been there. Um, I went with my, well, with my Tracy, my wife, the first time. But since I've been off, well, I've been off this week and also I'm off next week, I thought I may as well do something with my time. So yeah, I thought I would just, uh, I'm currently I don't know where I am, I'm uh, 39 miles from uh, from the house, so I thought I would just record and just talk nonsense, like I usually do. Looks like it's going to start raining, just for a change. I mean, the weather this week has just been, it's ranged from absolutely gorgeous to downright awful. It was uh, beautiful in the... Uh, on Monday, really, really hot, and then it was absolutely lashing it down the last couple of days. And here we go, the rain is now on. So anyway, yeah, um, <clears throat> I was playing, I got myself a Pro Controller for the Nintendo Switch. Now, I did have a look at it, and it's not cheap. It's, uh, I got it for £59.99 out of Argos. It isn't cheap, but when you think about all the, the other controllers, I mean a PS4 controller, a PS1 controller, I think, or could be quiet, I think uh, they're about the same price, maybe slightly cheaper, but not much less. But if you've got a Switch, I would thoroughly, thoroughly recommend you get a Pro Controller. It's, uh, 
I think of the Switch, the Switch is an excellent little console, I really, I'm really enjoying it. And yeah, I mean the, the controls are nice. The thing for me about this, the, the little, uh, is it Joy-Cons I think they call it, they come out with all these stupid names Nintendo for their different controllers. The little controllers that you click on or clip on to the, the main controller, they're quite, they're not flimsy, but I get the feeling that they would break really easy and they're not cheap. And the thing as well is, there's not a lot of movement in the little uh, gamepad, analog gamepad, there's not a great deal of movement. It just feels like, I'll just stop talking while I let her finish. Yeah, you've, you've told me the second exit at A915 to leave in, I know. Um, yeah, the, the actual, they're just, they're very small. Um, even my daughter, Ava, commented that she finds the, the controls just slightly on the small side. And yeah, so the Pro Controller is like a full size, it's just like a, it's like a, an Xbox One controller. Um, it feels a lot better and it also means it's a good place to break down or what are you doing? Are you moving? Well, he's got his hazard lights on but he's still moving forward so, no, oh and he's on the phone as well um, yeah what was I talking about it feels like a, an Xbox controller the sticks yards. shut up I should turn that down you know what, I might just do that when she starts talking I'll turn her down a wee bit uh, aye, the, the, the sticks, they're obviously, it's a full-size controller, so, right, shut up, of course, ah, oh, the radio's come on now, dearie me, aye, where was it, it's a, <laughs> it's a full-size controller, so it feels much, much better, and it means that you don't have to constantly unplug and plug the little Joy-Cons into the, the handheld part, if you want to play in a handheld, then obviously you just lift the thing out out of the, the bay or the whatever it's called, the docking station, is that what it's called? It's probably got some other stupid name since it's Nintendo. But yeah, if you've got a like I said, if you've got a switch and you're using it a lot, I would definitely say it's worth it. It is a bit a fair chunky money. I think fifty I think fifty nine ninety nine is the cheapest I've seen. That was Argos I got things from. I mean, I've seen them sell for 65 quid elsewhere. But uh, yeah, a lot of money, but I would definitely say it's worth it. So I've been playing, what was I playing last night? Shut up! Right, I'm going to. Right, I should maybe be listening because you know what? I'll end up missing my, my turn. I'm going left here, I think. Yeah, yeah. Um, What was I saying? Aye, ah, I was playing. Zelda, is it Breath of Fire it's called? Is that what it's called? I can never remember. I was playing it last night, getting a bit further into it. Typical me, when I got the Switch, I raved about how wonderful Zelda was and then I promptly didn't play it for months and months and months and months. But uh, aye, quite enjoying it. I put about two, three hours into it. <coughs> Excuse me, last night. I've also got, so that's three games I've got for the Switch now. I've got that, I've got Mario Kart, and I've got Splatoon 2, which I have never ever played. I've played the first one, and it's a daft thing, this. My daughter absolutely loves Splatoon. I mean, she's, she played Splatoon, I don't know how much she played it and played it and played it and played it, and she's actually really good at it. And because she's played it so much, it's completely put me off even want to play it, which I know is daft. It was the same with, uh, what do you call it? Oh, what's the name of that? Little Big Planet for the PlayStation 3. I remember reading all about it and I thought it looks great, platform games, I'll be all over it. And I showed it to my daughter and she started playing it and then it became a bit of an obsession with her, her and her pals used to play it all the time and again, because she's been playing it so much, right, I hear you, second exit. It's like having the wife in the car, honestly. Um, aye. Because my daughter's played it so much, it's just completely put me off. It's like, you know, if, <laughs> it'd be a bit like if you're watching somebody who's constantly watching a film and then they say to you, do you want to watch it? You're like, nah, I kind of feel like I've played, I've seen the film already. And that's a bit like it, although I've never actually played Splatoon, I feel like I've played it. 
which is kind of daft, but quite a few of my mates are big, big Splatoon fans. Um, and it's just meant to be a really, really good game, so I should really try and make a point of playing it. Apparently, and I don't know how much truth is in this, you can play online at the moment for free um, with Nintendo on you know, the Switch, but is it next year I think it is, they're going to start charging money. Well, I've never, like I said, I've never really played, <coughs> excuse me, I've never really played any Nintendo games online. I haven't played any. I don't think I have. Can't, if I have, I can't think any. Um, but I do know from looking at it, I don't think, I don't think the online service is as good as, you know, the Xbox or the PlayStation. Um, or a Sony, I should say. And I think, I mean, I've always, I've always said, and I'll, I'll change my mind on this now, but I've always said that the Xbox Live on the Xbox 360 was by far the best online service you could get. But the, the online service for the PS3 was completely free. So you're going to say, well, you would expect to get better service for something that you're paying for and I've got to say, I mean, I think it was 40 quid for a year, I would say it was justified I'd much rather, I'd rather pay 40 quid to get a good online service than pay nothing and get a crap one and I think that goes pretty much the same as the, uh, as the Nintendo online service, I don't think it's the best, so if they're going to start charging, I mean, is it going to mean that Nintendo are going to start giving away free games? like you get with uh, the PlayStation Plus. Interesting point. I noticed that the PlayStation Plus games this month are actually really good. They're giving away uh, Far Cry 3, which uh, is pretty good. Or is it Just Cause 3? Just, is it Just Cause? I think it might be Just Cause, actually. I hope it is. Uh, because that's a game that I quite fancy getting. Again, I'd see my mate playing it and I thought it looks really good. So that'd be good. It might, it might be Far Cry, but I think it's just cause. But don't come running to me if I'm wrong. But yeah, I mean, uh, Sony are starting to give away some better games. I've, I've been a big sort of. Uh, I've been very, very critical of the first couple of years of the PlayStation Plus on the PS4 because all you were getting, all you were getting, was indie games. Indie games, indie games, you know, we don't want, I didn't buy a state-of-the-art console to play games that look like 8-bit games. I want games to look next-gen, I want them to be HD, super graphics. Um, and that's all we've had with sort of indie games for such a long time, but in the last probably six months, it has got better. They've given away a few decent games, I mean, is it Dying Light, I think, is, it? is that one that came out, I think? That was one of the last month's games which I've not actually played yet. Um, so yeah, good to see that Sony are uh, improving the games they're giving away. So yeah, getting back to the Nintendo Online thing. Is that going to be, are they going to give away free games? How much is it going to be? You know, if it's going to be 30 quid just to play online then I think they're taking the piss. But you know, I mean... <laughs> Nintendo games generally do keep their value. Excuse me. Oh, they generally do keep their value, so I can't see uh, I can't see Nintendo want to give away their uh, their back catalogue quite yet. I'll be doing for time. I've got about 50 minutes I think before that. I run out of space or the battery goes whatever's first or else I run out of stuff to talk about. So I uh, we'll, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. The uh, you know the live thing for Nintendo might be really good, but we shall see. So aye, uh, that's been it. I was watching uh, Steve Benway's video. Steve, um, <laughs> he's got something. He's got a good thing going with uh, a couple of online uh, Chinese distributors. Is it Gear Best and some other one? I can't remember what it is. And they're basically giving Steve free stuff to do a review and obviously he gets to keep it 
Um, now, to be fair to Steve, Steve is a very, very honest person. You know, he says exactly what he thinks of something. So if he thinks something's rubbish, he'll tell you. And he's doing the same with this. Um, he's getting all his free gadgets, and he, he says exactly what he what he thinks. I mean, there was a tablet that he got, and he absolutely panned it, even though he's getting it for nothing. I don't know if that company are still giving him stuff. I've no idea. It would be pretty shallow of them if they stopped giving somebody just because you're getting a bad review. But uh, aye, he was <coughs> showing off a, another little console, the GPD Pocket, and uh, it's it's basically a little handheld, but it's got a full QWERTY keyboard. Um, I've not, he's not done. Well, I've not seen it yet. If he has done it, I watched his unboxing video of it. Um, but he usually does an unboxing and then he'll do a, an actual video of it running. Right, second exit. Thank you very much. Um, better stop here. Car coming. Or car turning. Right, well, where are we going? Are we going up this way, I think? Take the second exit. Better concentrate. Uh, aye, this GPD Pocket. So it's a it's a handheld console, but it's got a full uh, it's got a full query keyboard. So I'm interested to see how it is. I mean, Steve's got a few of these now. He's got the GPD. He's got the GPD One, which again is a it's a full it's a console and it's, it's actually it's a proper computer. I think it runs Windows. Windows 10 or something or Windows 8, I can't remember what, Take the what one. Exit. And he's also got the GPD XD, which was the one that I bought. That's a touchy subject with me. I mean, I paid, did I, what did I pay? 160 quid, something like that for it. And uh, it literally, it didn't even last a year. In fact, you know what, I think it was literally a couple of days, third right, third exit. Fourth Road Bridge, that's where I want to go. Aye, this GPDXD that I bought, I had it for, I think it was literally a couple of days over its uh, 12 months, and it just didn't come on. It didn't come on. I... And the annoying thing was, I wasn't looking for a free replacement, anything like that. I did contact GPD, I mean, I contacted them through social media, through YouTube, through Facebook, and I just come out, get a bus, you're free to pull out whenever you want. Um, we're going this way, I think. Yep. I contacted them through social media, Facebook, um, YouTube, Twitter, I even emailed them. I even went on their website, sent them a message, and all I asked was, could you I explained what had happened, he says it doesn't work, I don't think that 12 months is a suitable value for money for something that costs that amount of money, and I just asked him if he could tell me how I go about getting it repaired, and they never even replied to any messages, which I think is quite frankly despicable, <laughs> it really is. Yeah, you could say, well, what do you expect, you're buying from China, they should still be giving you uh, some sort of uh, value for money or customer service I should say. So with that in mind, I mean I, I contacted them several times and I said they never even had the decency to get back to me. I did tell them that I'd given the, their console a favourable review on my YouTube channel and in fact a few people had actually gone and bought, bought one of the GPDs based on my review. So you'd think, at the very least, you know, an email acknowledging would have been nice. But they obviously didn't think so, man. Going the right way, yeah, Edinburgh. I hate these people. They can see you want out, but they decide, nah, fuck it. I'm just going to, I'm just going to put the foot to the floor and let you sit in and wait at me. So I, I didn't, uh, that was it. I wouldn't buy any GPD stuff ever again because they're shocking customer service and they don't deserve my money. But this thing that Steve's got, yeah, don't get me wrong if they, if they uh, offered to give me one for absolutely free, 
you then I would take it. Um, but that's not likely to happen. But yeah, it'll be interesting to see just how good this thing is. The thing is with all these, there's so many. I mean, how many Android tablets do you really need? What was the one? There was a, a console which I actually pre-ordered and it was meant to come out, I think it was May last year. And it got delayed, and it got delayed, and it got delayed, and it got delayed, and it was the GXD... I can't even remember, I wonder what the hell it was called. It was about 200 odd quid, 300 quid, I think it might have been. And it was supposed to be the dog's bollocks, as far as these consoles go. Um, but, I don't think, did it ever get, I think it did get released. I remember seeing a few people reviewing it, but for whatever reason, it just it died a death. I think they made an initial batch, and then you just they just stopped making it. I don't know what the problem with it was. But like a lot of these consoles, if you look at the uh, the advertising, they always advertise way more than they can actually offer. So always take any kind of adverse like that with a pinch of salt. Mate. Come on mate, hurry up. Chop, chop. It's actually uh, along here I'm heading towards the M90, which will then take me over the fourth road bridge. There's actually one of the biggest Amazon um, distribution centres in, in the UK. It might, it might actually be the biggest one. Some size. So I think a lot of the stuff that I buy comes from here. But aye, where do you draw the line with these consoles? Like I said, if you're getting them for nothing, that's fine, but do I need another one? Nah, not at all. In my opinion, the best one so far is still the uh, Nvidia Shield Portable. I mean, it's a super powerful little computer. It's, you know, it's getting on in years, but the controls are sublime, it's real, real proper quality, it's heavy, it feels that it's really well made. The problem with the, X, the GPDXD, which I had and it, obviously I was proven right, it does feel quite fragile and obviously it broke and that was, that was the end of that. One console which I've got a handheld is the Pandora. Now I have featured it quite a few times, mentioned I've done a video of it. The Pandora was, I suppose you could almost say it was like an early Kickstarter. It was before, it was, it, it was a Kickstarter thing before Kickstarter was a thing, if that makes any sense. It was basically, people had to fund this thing. So there was a very, 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 very small number of these things made. And <clears throat> I was looking, I was actually Googling the other day there just to see if you can still buy the, the Pandora and you can unless you get it second hand. Apparently they stopped making them in 2013. Now the Pandora is on paper it is really really old technology. I mean I think it's something like don't quote me is it something like a I don't know Pentium it runs something it runs at like 666 megahertz. It's not even like one gig megahertz. It's not a fast machine. But the way it's been put together, yeah, it's quite flimsy and you know it's it was basically handmade with all these guys. Um, it's not mass produced at all. It, the actual parts itself on paper it should be shite. But the Pandora is a wonderful little console. Um, I mean it's got the full keyboard so it was way ahead of its time, you know, this thing that Steve Ben was showing off. I mean, it's way ahead of that. It was, about, you know, probably 10 years before that. But considering how, uh, considering how sort of low spec the Pandora is, it does an absolutely astonishing job at, uh, what do you call it? It playing emulators, even the PlayStation 4, eh, no, PlayStation 4, listen to me, I wish. Even the PlayStation, it plays the PlayStation games brilliantly. I think it may also do the, uh, the Dreamcast. 
But yeah, it's a wonderful thing and one of the great things about the Pandora is the battery life. It is just insane. <clears throat> I mean the battery is actually the size, it's the same size as the unit. The Pandora's probably, I would say, about the size of the original DS Lite. It's about that size. Uh, I think the screen's bigger but enough. But the actual battery is the same size as the unit. You know, it's not as thick obviously, but it's the whole thing, almost. And the battery, I don't know how long it lasts. I mean, I, I can charge it up and it can last me months and months. I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm not sitting playing it every single day, you know, far from it. But you can you can play it and then you can not put it on for six months. You switch it on and it just works, you know, whereas any of these modern Android type things, the battery after a couple of days would just completely run out. So uh, yeah, I was going to sell it. I was going to sell it when I got my GPDXD, which I'm glad I didn't because obviously it broke. But uh, it was like the backless prime. Mark he persuaded me to keep it. He says you're better just hanging on to it, and I'm glad I have. I mean, it's you really don't see them on eBay. Very, 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 very rarely do you ever see them on, on eBay for sale. So it's, I think it's always going to be one of these collectibles which will probably only appreciate the value. Um, so yeah, anyway listen, I'm just, uh, I'm conscious that I'm just talking shite. I'm, I'm not talking about anything in particular so I'm going to get going. So uh, yeah, I'll we'll hand you back to me in the house for the Friday Waffle, right? Yeah, hope you enjoyed that guys, uh, that was just a wee daft little extra thing. So, as usual guys, thanks for all your continued support and finally, thank you very much for watching.